The Gospel of Luke, chapters 1, verses 5 through 80, Gabriel announces John's and Jesus' births. September of 2023. The structure of Luke's Gospel consists of nine sections. The preface, the birth narratives, John's missions, Jesus' mission, Jesus' journey towards Jerusalem, his confrontations in Jerusalem, his death by crucifixion, his resurrection back to life, and his ascension into heaven. In this section, we're dealing with the birth narratives. A message comes to Israel. The Messianic age has begun. Prophets' predictions have been fulfilled. The Messiah's forerunner has run, and the Messiah has come, as evidenced by angelic appearances and messages after 400 years of silence, miraculous conceptions such as those in the Hebrew Bible, Holy Spirit-inspired prophecies, and the appearance of John and of Jesus in fulfillment of scriptural prophecies. Stop the video and read verses 5 through 7. And note that King Herod the Great, according to more recent scholarship, may have died in the year 1 CE, in which case John and Jesus may have been born in about 3 BC. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth are said to be righteous, that is, in God's opinion, in the same way that Noah, Abraham, and Job were pronounced righteous, although none of them had ever obeyed the Mosaic law. That is, for righteousness comes by faith, and those who are righteous by faith seek to please God. Now, the priestly division served twice a year for about two weeks, although all divisions served together during festivals. Stop the video and read verses 8 through 10. According to 1 Chronicles chapter 24, Abijah was the eighth course, serving between May 26 and 29 in 3 BCE. Since there were so many priests in 3 BCE, individuals were chosen by lot to serve at temple. A priest burned incense before the morning sacrifice and again after the evening sacrifice. He entered the holy space, placed embers on an altar, threw incense on them, said a blessing, turned round, and left. This all happened in the space of very few minutes. Stop the video and read verses 8 through 15. Angel of the Lord, in the Hebrew Bible, was an audible, visible appearance of Yahweh. But in this text, the angel is identified as Gabriel. In the Hebrew Bible, angels announced miraculous births, as in the book of Genesis and in Isaiah. The name John derives from the Hebrew name Yohanna, meaning Yah, grace, or Yahweh is gracious. Now, he who names a child claims the child as his own for his family, his clan, and his tribe. Thus, Yahweh claims John as his own. He will be great. This expression occurs in Second Kings to mean esteemed and respected. Stop the video and read verses 15 through 17. And then read Malachi 4, 5 through 6. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of Yahweh comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, lest I come and strike the land with total destruction. So, how did Jesus know that Jerusalem would be destroyed within a lifetime? Note that when asked later, Are you Elijah? John would reply, No, I am not. 
reason for which Jesus said, If you are willing to accept it, John is Elijah who is to come. So, John would have been a sufficient fulfillment had the nation repented. Stop the video and read verses 18 through 20. Then note that the name Gabriel comes from a singular possessive form of the Hebrew noun Gever, meaning man or hero, a real man, and the ancient name for God, El. He is named in Daniel chapters 8 and 9 in the Hebrew Bible as the one who grants to human beings insight and understanding. In the ancient book of Enoch, there are four such archangels named Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Phanuel. These are the four angels of the Lord. Let's compare for a moment what is said about Zechariah and John with what is said about Mary and Jesus in the same chapter. Note the parallel correspondences. Somewhat different, in verse 15, John would be filled with the Holy Spirit, whereas Jesus will be conceived by the Holy Spirit. Zechariah was muted for unbelief, whereas Mary was praised for her faith. Although both had asked the same question, how could this be? In Zechariah's case, he knew of the Hebrew Bible examples of miraculous conceptions, and therefore knew they were possible. Whereas in Mary's case, there was no Hebrew Bible example of a real virgin bearing a child. Stop the video and read verses 26 through 29. Note this about Mary. She is said to be a virgin. In biblical usage, the term means a young woman who is neither married nor pregnant. Her name, Maryam, appears to be from an Egyptian word that means beloved. She is said to be betrothed to Joseph, a descendant of King David. Since betrothals were arranged by families, they were considered to be as binding as marriage. Stop the video and read verses 30 through 33. Then note more about Mary. She is said to be highly favored. The Greek term is a perfect passive feminine participle, which could be translated having been and still graced by God. She will conceive and give birth to a son. She is to call his name Jesus, or Joshua, Yehoshua in Hebrew, meaning Yah or Yahweh saves. Remember, he who names a child claims the child as his own. Stop the video and read verses 34 through 38. Where Mary says, I am a virgin, the Greek says literally, I know no male. The Holy Spirit was Yahweh himself in Isaiah chapter 63, but the Holy Spirit had left the temple, had left Jerusalem, and had left Judea, and only now appears again in Scripture. This Holy One to be born is literally the Holy Thing being begotten, which is a neuter participle that is neither masculine nor feminine, perhaps anticipating the term paideon, the Greek word for child, which is not gender-specific, often translated servant, even the servant of the Lord from Isaiah and then the Son of God using the term huios, which is an offspring who inherits. Jesus will inherit all that God owns. So, we note about Jesus in Luke chapter 1 that it was the Father who named him. He will be great, and the term great in Semitic style, when unqualified, often takes the meaning of greatest. He will be called Son of the Most High, a messianic title. 
he will inherit the throne of his ancestor David, therefore a messianic rule. He will reign over Jacob, Israel forever. He must be Messiah. His kingdom will never end, which was said of the Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7, a deity in human form. And he is the holy child who is to be born, and he will be called Son of God. Stop the video and read verses 41 through 45. Note the phrase, filled with the Holy Spirit. Whilst John in her womb was filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth is the first one expressly said to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Blessed are perfect passive participles, meaning having been approved. This does not mean full of blessing to dispense to others. Child is literally fruit of thy womb. The phrase, I am so favored, literally, whence to me this, that the mother of my Lord, etc. And blessed is literally happy. This is the same blessing that Jesus pronounced over all who faithfully follow him. Stop the video and read verses 46 through 56. Then note, Mary probably uttered this song or poem in Palestinian Aramaic. She says, God my Savior, making the Immaculate Conception somewhat doubtful. Every generation will call me blessed. This is an active verb, so we are free to call Mary blessed, that is, favored by God. However, it is not she who blesses us as some kind of a co-redemptrix. In her poem, spoken in Aramaic, verb tenses are implied by the context, so you are free to translate them as a past, present, and future. Stop your video and read verses 67 through 79. Then note that we're told here that Zechariah prophesied. The primary sign of the Holy Spirit is prophecy, that is, to speak revealed truth forthrightly. The term horn of salvation is a common trope for powerful Savior. The reference to King David is to the Israelite king to whom Yahweh had promised a perpetual reign over Israel. And when he mentions prophets, remember, there had been no authentic prophet in Israel for several centuries. Yet now, prophecy begins again. And salvation is through the forgiveness of sins, the path of peace with God. Since the time of the prophet Malachi, no prophet had risen in Israel since the 5th century BCE. Secondly, Yahweh's Holy Spirit had departed from the temple, from Jerusalem, and from Judea in the 6th century BCE, but he is now returned. Regarding prophecy, Elizabeth, Zechariah, and Mary prophesied when filled with the Holy Spirit. Prophecy, then, is the main sign of the Holy Spirit. John and Jesus, born under the reign of King Herod, we now live under two regimes, that of human politics and that of the Holy Spirit of the living God.